Let's look here on your election headquarters right now. We're crossing over live to the NDC headquarters where the party is addressing the media on issues of corruption. His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado collecting bribe, an issue which has become topical uh, in the last few days. Let me indicate that we don't have scripts for you today. And so you can take notes or record this, uh, the proceedings as we um, move along. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we'll be addressing you on today. To help the nation appreciate the true facts of this case so that they will be able to separate the lies from the truth and make an informed decision on this matter. Make an informed decision. Next week, Monday, 7 December 2020, when we go for the polls. And so at this stage, I will humbly appeal to all of us to put our mobile phones on silence. And respectfully, we are commencing the engagement, and so I will appeal to you to seize all phone calls, all movements. Please, those standing should try and get seats. I can still see empty seats. Uh, let's observe decorum and order in the room so that we can proceed smoothly. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, I have with me here the Deputy Communications Officer of the Party, Comrade Akugan. I also have here uh, a member of the National Communications Team of the Party, Dela Edem. I have other members of the National Communications Team. I can see Usubana Hina Godwin here. And uh, our Ashanti Regional Communications Officer is also here. We acknowledge all of you. We acknowledge your presence here. Now, we also have here the Director of Communications of the NDC, who will be sharing a few words with you on today's uh, topic, subject for today's uh, encounter. But to address us extensively on this subject is a man who has been an inspiration to some of us for uh, so many years. Uh, I call him senior brother and a mentor former Propaganda Secretary of the NDC, former Deputy Minister for Finance, former Minister for Agriculture, and the current Member of Parliament for the K2 South constituency. I had to call him just this morning to plead with him that, Senior, I have lost my voice, and so you will need to step in today to do this, you know, historic assignment and uh, he obliged us he's here to do justice to the issue so with a round of applause ladies and gentlemen let's welcome to the podium honorable fifi fiavi kwete thank you thank you very much uh, my younger brother and uh, the ever dynamic indefatigable fearless Sammy Jenfi. And often when I hear him, I always say, uh, my soul is glad. Uh, that's a, a young man after my own heart. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to be with you, ladies and gentlemen of the media, on behalf of uh, our comrades who are here. Uh, we will not really speak for long because we have a few things we want to show to every one of you. And I uh, hope that through you, uh, the country as a whole, uh, we get to know the gravity and the danger that confronts uh, not just the body politic of this country, but the very soul of this nation is at stake. And you, more than any group, have a responsibility and a duty. Because unfortunately, what it is we are having today is simply not happening by its, own, uh, uh, by, by its own self. It's happening also because a certain environment 
which is almost like an environment that is almost compromising and enabling this degeneration to continue. That, in, that environment is what is making this thing actually become more and more a danger to the very soul of our country. What it is we are coming to do today is to literally remove the mask. The mask that for years has gone in I mean, claiming incorruptibility. The mask that you see on various billboards, you say the battle is the Lord's. The mask that talk about, I'm here to protect the public purse. The mask and the veil that pretends that I'm here to fight for corruption. We want to help unveil the mask even further. Now, as you know, that mask already has been largely removed. Not quite a few days. Uh, we have uh, the following statement that came from an individual that the president of this country himself trusted and championed as an icon that believes in fighting against corruption. And I'm talking about the special prosecutor, Martin Amidu, that the president and his people have described for many years as a fearless, uh, patriotic, courageous, honest man who fights against corruption. Now this man told us that when he met the president on 23rd of October 2020, he received the shock of his life when the president demanded that he, the special prosecutor, took no further action on the JAPA royalties transaction anti-corruption assessment report for another week. That was when it dawned on him that the president, whom all along he, Martin Amidu, had trusted so much for integrity, only looked like the innocent flower of anti-corruption, but in reality, he was really the mother corruption serpent under the innocent looking flower. Martin Amidu's words, not mine. Now, some months ago, I addressed a press conference in this country. That was in the wake of what was going on relating to sending troops in the border region under the guise that they were going to stop COVID patients coming through various borders of the East, which we knew was just hypocrisy. And in addressing that press conference, I made a statement. I said, that what it is we have presiding over Ghana today is actually what Jesus in Matthew 23, 28 called a whitewashed grave that looks beautiful on the outside. But when you open it up, it's filled with fields, dead men's bones, and corruption. Not my words, but the words of Jesus. A beautiful grave that looks very white and nice on the outside. And when you open it up, it's filled with decadence, with corruption, with dead men's bones, and with all manner of uncleanness. Exactly that is what Martin Amidu is telling you. That all along, he had all along believed that we had a leader who truly is a leader of integrity, who believed in the fight against corruption, but in reality, he actually is the inspirer of corruption, the one who covers it up, the one who instigated, the one who absolutely enables it to even thrive more. So we're talking Martin Amiru's statement. We're talking about what some of us have said, I mean, months ago. We're talking about what it is that today you'll be coming to realize for yourself. Now, we are not asking for perfection. That's not what we're asking for. There's no perfect leader anywhere in the world. Not in America, not in England, not in China. Nowhere do we have perfect leaders. We have humans. So there's no a problem about being human and being imperfect. Kwame Krumah was not perfect. Jerry Rollins, my personal mentor, hero, was not perfect. He was a human being. Prof Mills, President Kufo, President Mahama, all of them are human. And President Nakufuado, human as well. But the danger is not simply about being imperfect. The danger is, is when you have an imperfect being who absolutely has made what you call hypocrisy and deception something that literally threatens the country, then there's serious danger. And that danger gets worse 
when you see a situation where all over people voices of conscience that must speak suddenly start acting we have not heard we have not seen we cannot speak then the country is in danger that is the danger that confronts the very soul of this country today Many of us are not realizing it, but it's a serious danger that threatens the very social fiber of Ghana. President Rawlings often spoke about the nature of the social fiber. And there's a gradual degradation, there's a, there's a systematic attempt to destroy it through lies, through deception, through hypocrisy. Hiding the corruption. And if you try to fight it, it fights you back. That's exactly what happened to Manasi Azuri who fought corruption before the time of Nana Kufuado, but when he attempted the same thing, he realized that it's a different ball game. That's what happened to Anas. He did the same thing before Nana Kufuado. When he and Ameswale decided to do the same thing in this government, it's a different ball game. That's what happened to Domelovo. Today, it's on leave, because it's a different ball game. In the midst of all the so-called fighting for the, uh, for the public pass, protecting the public pass, the battle is the Lord's. I'm actually coming to fight corruption. It's nothing but what you call gross corruption and degeneration of the highest order. And what makes it worse is the hypocrisy that endangers the very soul of this country. It's important to appreciate that leadership is all about credibility. Now, this lack of credibility is not simply in what it is we are about to see. You see the same lack of credibility even in the political. Many of you, I'm sure, will remember when the also West Wagon violence happened. That same afternoon, MPP organized a press conference. And what did they do? They say actually that whole thing was orchestrated by the NDC, the whole work of the NDC. NDC did it because we knew we were going to lose the election. That is exactly who they are. They don't have the courage to appreciate what the truth is. So they would simply go at every length simply to cover it up. But eventually when their own commission started going into it, the truth started coming out, everybody got to know that no, NDC has nothing to do with it. That whole violence was simply done by the powers that be, they orchestrated it, they committed violence, they did everything themselves. And when the commission presented a report, what happened to the report? Jettisoned. That again is a double talk, is a hypocrisy. And that is more grave than simply collecting bribe. The collecting of bribe is bad enough, but what you have on top of it, literally a presidency that simply is making sure that hypocrisy and deception become the order of the day, this country is in trouble. We are doomed. And if you in the media, if others who have what you call voices of conscience continue to pretend that we cannot see, we cannot hear, and allowing this to continue, we are destroying this nation and our children are in trouble. Our children are in trouble. The soul of Ghana is at stake. This is not just about power. Our national anthem says we should have fearless honesty. That fearless honesty should enable us to fight oppressors' rule. That's the only way you can build a nation that is great and strong. You have seen what you call a catalog of lies. One, what, what, one district, one factory, lies. What they've done is simply go back to the same factories, give them some incentive. You know, there's nothing wrong with accepting that, you know, I promise this, I simply can't do it. There's nothing wrong. But when you go into what you call the grand deception, to lie to people when everybody can see that what you are doing is not what you promise, that is destroying the very soul of a nation. One, one village, one dam, they come and tell you that, oh, well, do you expect us to be able to build dams with 250,000? Then why the deception? That's what you find systematically, all kinds of things. You say it's simply for power. And then when you say, you say oh, you promised well, 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 it was in a one-time premium, you didn't do it. So that's their justification. <laughs> After all, we lost power. So if anything at all, the country has done what it's got to do. What about you? That rolled on the high horse of incorruptibility. And you are actually doing far worse. And when they talk, you say, oh, because you promised you didn't do, it justifies my degeneration, my decadence, my corruption, my lies, my hypocrisy. No. So what it is we are coming to show you today is to establish to you that we have been in COVID. And all over the world, COVID has been called a global pandemic. But it's actually a bigger pandemic that confronts Ghana. 
It's a pandemic of deception that is ruling this nation. It's a plague of hypocrisy that is presiding over Ghana. It's a transformation of Ghana into a citadel of corruption and allow all the enablers to keep quiet while grave danger is going on. So what you're going to see today is again another systematic effort by our friends in the MPP to try to play a fast one over every one of you. You in the media should not enable it. You should not enable it. Some of the lies you're going to hear that, oh, this actually happened even before you became president. It's a lie. We're going to establish that. We establish that to you. Oh, this actually was just a donation. There was nothing wrong about it. It's a lie. And deep down, I'm sure many of you know. Deep down in the heart of President Akufado, he knows. I come from Nogopo in the Volta region. And a few of you who know Nogopo will know. You dare not lie. If President Akufuado actually says, he's a man, let him come with me to Nogopo and see whether he can lie there. He will not. He will not. But because in the name of all these holy, holy, he can swear in the Bible and lie. Because there's no fear. But when it is that you know that you cannot escape, you will not be able to lie. And we'll be able to establish that to you that all the things you are going to see, the maneuvers on the part of our friends in MPP to simply deceive you, is simply nothing but lies. Can you imagine if President Rawlings were caught on tape receiving $40,000 of bribe? Can you imagine what will happen in this country? Can you imagine what will happen in your media? What will happen in the civil society in this country, the religious establishment? I'm sure having a microphone realizes the danger that is facing this country. <laughs> Can you imagine if Prof. Mills were found having bribe on tape? The, 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 I, mean the, I mean, the difficulty, the revulsion that will happen all over this country? Can you imagine President Mahama were caught on tape receiving 40,000 bribe? But that's what we have with Mr. Incorruptibility. Mr. The battle is the Lord. Mr. I'm here to fight the public pass. Mr. If you, don't, if you want to make money, go to the private sector, don't come and join the public sector. Now so, the Japan deal, the PDS scandal, and the series of scandals that we've talked over and over and over about, the PPA scandal that people like uh, Manasi Azuri have I mean, brought out, all the uncovering that was done by Anas and the rest. All this, this is simply an evidence to let you know that every single one of those has been true. That what it is we have had is a massive cover up, a lot of deception, a lot of pretense, a lot of looking like whitewashed graves, but hiding nothing but corruption, degeneration, and I mean, embellishing nicely with the double talk and the hypocrisy. So we will proceed now and show you a series of, uh, of uh, videos. We will be starting, yeah, first we'll be starting with uh, the very fake one, the very fake one. Just as I mentioned to you, how the rush during the Yaosu West Commission to come and fabricate all kinds of things, Wabi and Samoa led the whole lie that everything was NDC orchestrated. This is exactly what it is they do. This is a typical, I mean, uh, modus operandi. So they rush ahead. You ask yourself, why would MPP suddenly start rushing ahead with putting out a video that shows their leader receiving bribe or receiving donation, as they call it? Why? One week to election, suddenly MPP major, uh, what you call, uh, uh, key social media leaders start putting out video of President Akufuado receiving bribe. Why would they? Why would they? That tells you that something is happening. It tells you that they got wind that something true is about to come. So they decided to come ahead and of course, believing that somehow the people of Ghana may not be able to see true. After all, they've got a lot of people who are enabling them anyhow. A lot of people who even know deep down the truth, but will pretend they don't see. They know that all that environment is so if we can go ahead and do, we will get a massive enabling environment that will enable us to be able to deceive the people and win power. That's what they did. So we want to show you first the fake one. Then after that, we'll give you the real background that led to what the main video is. And then when you see, when you understand the background, then we'll show you 
the real thing that happened. And all along, please take notes. And as you listen to the real one, take note and listen carefully. And you see the difference between what is being said in the fake and what is said in the real.